Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If this is your first time here, please go down and click subscribe. If you're a return viewer or subscriber, thank you. Once again, I do appreciate everyone here. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. What we're going to talk about today is setting up iSCSI on our UC3200. Now, we do have a switch. If you remember the Netgear switch we introduced you to, we're going to do a little bit of configuration on that, and I'll explain that when we get to the PC. And then we are going to configure the UC3200 for iSCSI. Then in the next video uh, in the UC3200 series, we'll uh, plug in a server. If you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you saw the Unify server that we're going to be using to run our VMs. So that's exciting. That's coming. Uh, so oh, also there's a whole s stack of gear back there. People start naming off what's back there. All right, anyway, let's get on over to the computer and take care of it. All right, so sorry about the noise. The UC3200s are running. So real quick, what I want to do is, ex and what I want to do is explain to you how these are actually going to be hooked together. So here, what we have is our UC3200 and our management port that we're plugged into on each of the units, remember, we're plugged into these uh, top ports. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use our 10 gig ports over here and over here. And we're going to go to our iSCSI network. Now, what we're going to do real quick is we're going to hop over to our Netgear switch. We're going to go to switching. Now, uh, real quick, I wanted to point out this does have an iSCSI, 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 however you pronounce it. It does have a setup to make sure that iSCSI runs optimally on this switch. And what, uh, I think this is enabled by default. I don't remember turning this on. Maybe I did uh, when I was playing around. So maybe it's not, but uh, so enable uh, there, and then you can go to advanced and check out um, some of the other uh, uh, options here. But uh, what we for what we want to do, we want to go over here to switch, or uh, I'm sorry, switching, which is what I thought I was on, and go to VLAN. And down here under VLAN, we want to add VLAN five, and we're going to call it iSCSI. And we are going to go ahead and add. So now we've got VLAN number five, iSCSI here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we click save. And now what we're going to do is we are going to go to advanced configuration. Then we're going to go to VLAN membership. And what we're going to do, so port number one, or uh, VLAN number one is our untagged VLAN on all ports by default. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that there. We're going to go to VLAN 5. Now, here's the thing about VLAN 5 is we don't want it traversing the switch. So or the network. So you'll see that we don't even go to the edge router and create a VLAN 5. VLAN 5 is only going to live on this Netgear switch. It's only going to be for iSCSI traffic. We don't need it broadcasting outside of its of its area, out of its VLAN and other networks. So out of its broadcast domain, uh, we don't need it um, traversing any other VLANs, networks, not that this this traffic is going to be totally isolated on this switch. Now, if we had multiple switches that all needed access to the iSCSI VLAN, that would be a different story. Uh, but we would still relegate that traffic only to the ports on what is needed. We wouldn't, we wouldn't route it across the network. So we are not going to route it here. And I'm looking at the switch and that particular uh, bank of ports that we're in, we are in the copper ports, which are at 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And our iSCSI is plugged into, let's see. 
port 16 and port 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to go tag uh, untagged there, untagged, untagged. So now these last three ports are all going to be in the iSCSI VLAN. So this is set up. We'll check VLAN number one because there shouldn't be any markings there. Yeah, you can see there's there's no markings there. So VLAN one is is not on that port. And what we're gonna do, or on that so those set of ports, what we're gonna do is hop back over to our 3200, and we're gonna come into control panel and network. And we're going to go to network interfaces and you can see, so here's LAN, LAN one, there's our one gig ports. That's our management ports that we talked about. Now LAN three on each of the controllers are going to be in the iSCSI. They do have to have IP addresses. So we're going to make them static and we're going to use something that's uh, not in use on the network. So, and we're going to keep it probably a relatively small subnet because the next thing you're going to see after this video is us actually plugging the server in spinning up vms so i mean i feel four to five hosts are the maximum that's going to be in here for now so we're just going to do 10 dot dot so let's do 255 dot one and let's do 255.255.248 no gateway it didn't throw a fit about that IP yet okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to the other LAN 3 and we are going to edit this and it's going to be 10.10.255.2 .10 and 255.255.2 and 255.255.248 and we're going to click OK and so now you can see that those are both in the same network which is great so when we create our iSCSI um, connection from our server it will be dot three and be able to see actually it might be dot four is what we're going to do now. It is control panel. So we want to be back in a control panel network. And we are now going to go in to the network failover. And we are going to add that to LAN 3 as well. We'll apply that. That looks good. And... For now, that is the only thing we're going to change there. And the last thing to do is go to our iSCSI manager. You see we've got no targets, no LUNs. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a target. Now we should have to... Let's create... This should walk us through, I think, making a LUN if we don't have one. So we're going to just call this target one. We're going to just accept the defaults. Now, you can put authentication on. We're not going to do that in this example. I will if enough people want to see this on this side and, you know, maybe VMware. I'm, I will do that if enough people want to see it. But for now, we're going to skip this. All right. We have no existing iSCSI LUN. And uh, we don't want to map later. We're going to go ahead and map it now. We're going to create a new LUN. And we're just going to call it LUN1. And we are going to give it everything. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's create a... We'll create a 2 terabyte LUN. For the space allocation, we can do thick or thin. So thick is going to claim all of that storage immediately where thin kind of inflates like a balloon, the more you use it up to the max. Um, we'll just do thick for now. And we're gonna do next. 
and it says to ensure better performance, the newly created LUN will be zero eyes. Since iSCSI initiators will not be able to find the LUN bef uh, before the process finishes, you can view the progress in LUN tab. So we'll say yes there and we'll say apply. So now it is going to create the LUN and the target to the LUN. So here's the target name up here. And then down here is the iSCSI LUN. Now there's one more important thing that we want to do is we don't want iSCSI traffic going out of our, oops, I clicked the wrong thing there. We don't want iSCSI traffic bleeding back into um, our, one, our 192, 168, 66 network accidentally. We, we only want to keep iSCSI on those ports. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to target and we're going to go to edit. And right here under network binding, instead of all network interfaces, we're going to go to only selected interface and it's going to be LAN 3 and LAN 3. So now iSCSI services will not be available on those management ports. And that is absolutely something we want to make sure is that our iSCSI traffic is only where it's supposed to be. So at this point, we now have a target and a LUN, and we've set the proper um, settings for where iSCSI services are going to be available. And that's, that's it, that's a good start. We're gonna break here and we're gonna come back with another video uh, later in the week or next week that shows how to join our hypervisor. And if you want a choice or a say in which hypervisor we use, I know which hypervisor is loaded on there right now, which is probably what we're going to start with. But if you want to see other hypervisors, make sure you put those down in the comments. All right, that's it for this video. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form. Someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you want to support the channel by using our Amazon affiliate links and all of our other affiliate links, they are down below. It doesn't change your price, but it does kick a couple bucks to the channel. Once again, I want to thank you all for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.